G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. I do hope you're well. Well, the last few weeks have been a little bit disrupted because my kids have been on school holidays, but now they are back. So hopefully we will get a bit of a smoother run and a smoother schedule. Today I'm talking quickly about a channel update, which I'm super excited about, as well as some news and a tiny little bit of rumors. So let's jump straight into it. And if you want to know about the new firmware update for the Z62 and the Z72, jump to the end of this video for this late breaking rumored news. Okay, the channel update. I just want to say thank you so much to all of you out there for helping me get to the 21,000 subscriber mark. When I started, this was all just a crazy dream, and now that's a pretty large number. So thank you so much, all of you, for being out there. I really love and enjoy the community, and making films and making photographs has been my entire life, and I really do kind of love it more than I ever had, because the capacity to just dream up a shot and create it just gets easier and easier every single year as technology just sees more into the dark and sees more detail and allows us to be more handheld in lower light. Everything is just allowing for more creative opportunities. So it's absolutely exciting to be sitting here in the middle of all of this as it unfolds. So thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for joining me on the journey. Now, what I want to talk about today is channel membership. I, you know, I've thought about this for a long time. I've vacillated on it for a long time, but I kind of think there's something in it for you and there's something in it for me too, of course. Now, in no way will people who are non-members, nothing is going to change. We're going to have sort of the same number of videos, the same type of content, and the channel is going to continue to grow and mature as much as I can with the resources that I have. But what channel membership allows for is just a little bit more to go back into the channel as memberships grow. And because people are helping me accelerate the growth of the channel, I want to give something back. So there's going to be three tiers of membership. The first tier is relative roughly, depending on where you are in the world and what coffee costs, it's relative to a cup of coffee. Very affordable. A cup of coffee per month, by the way. That's the first level. And you get stickers and you get badges and you get discounts on some items on my website. The second tier, well, it's less than two cups of coffee per month and you get discounts on everything on my website plus the level before everything that was in that and you get over the course of the year, you're going to get some digital files which you'll be able to use as wallpapers. And then the third tier, which is kind of like three cups or three and a half cups of coffee, again, depending on where you are in the world and how much coffee costs. For example, here in Australia, a cup of coffee is between four and five dollars from a cafe. And in that third tier, you get everything that's in those previous two tiers. Plus, we're going to have more one-on-one -on -one contact, and that's going to happen mostly, I think, by way of me doing one live show per month where the members and I, we get to chat and have a bit of a powwow about what's been going on in the community for the last month and sharing whatever we want to share. We can grow this together. Look, I've never done channel membership before. I've never done any type of membership before. So this is new to me. So let's enjoy this adventure together. But what I really want to stress and reiterate is Nothing's going to change with non-members. We are going to continue to create the same content and continue to steadily grow and improve and experiment. If there's one thing that YouTube say to us in, in, in the behind the scenes all the time, keep experimenting, keep coming up with new ideas. You've got to try out different things. And part of one of, one of the things that I love to do and part of what channel membership will help allow to happen is experimenting with ideas outside of just what we do every week. 
Now, some of my favorite videos don't necessarily get the highest views, but I think they're really interesting and enjoyable and totally worth creating. Thus, through the extra resources, which of course will take time, it's gonna take quite a while to build uh, a membership, but that's okay because this whole journey and adventure is a long-term proposition. That's always what it's been and that's always what I've signed up for. So, we take this adventure together. I thank those who want to be members and we can spend more time together chatting one-on-one -on -one and again doing the live stream together. And for everyone else, it's still going to be the same and continuing to be better month on month, year on year. I thank you all for being here. That's channel membership. You can see the button down there. And look, this is similar to Patreon, which you hear about a lot on YouTube. I just decided to stick everything within the one ecosystem rather than having an exterior outsourced version of that. Who knows? If anyone's got any thoughts about it, let me know in the comments below. Okay, now let's jump over to the news and I would love to start with the Nikon ZFC. So what we're hearing firstly about the ZFC is Nikon has come out and formally apologized already to say that orders are so strong for this camera that they are not going to meet all orders in their first production run. So that's super exciting. Now, I have a feeling Nikon thought that this would be successful. I have another feeling that they didn't realize it was going to be this successful. So I do hope that Nikon in their production runs are realizing that the passion and excitement around the Z mount is growing as it's becoming more fleshed out. I mean, the reality is all we really need is a Z9 and arguably a Z8, a Z90 and some telephoto lenses. And then we have the basics of a system pretty much for everybody. Add in your F to Z adapter and all of the plethora of F lenses that exist today, plus all the other adaptable lenses. And really, this system is mental, as they say in the United Kingdom, mental, which means it's very good. The ZFC selling well. Further to that, there's been an article in Hong Kong stating that the ZFC has been pre-ordered in unprecedented quantities unlike we've seen for a very, very long time. So that retro inspired look is getting people excited. Coupling that with the fact that you have all of the ergonomic differences that come with the buttons and the look and the fact that they've made the special edition version of the 28 mil, people are loving it. And this is a Z50 with some tweaks that are making it even better. So that is exciting and it's excited a lot of people. I do think Nikon are going to sell a great number of the ZFC, which segues me over nicely to the poll that I conducted. A week ago, I asked, would you, yes or no, be buying a ZFC? Some people complained that I didn't leave a maybe option. I'm sorry about that. It's always hard to know exactly what to ask in these things, but out of 1,500 respondents, 39% said yes, they will be buying one. Now, if you think about the fact that this channel not only services Z users, but it also services F mount users, but it also services the entire photographic community, well, I think this is a really high percentage of respondents. I think this reflects the fact that the ZFC is a very popular camera for a whole plethora of reasons and Nikon are going to do extremely well with it. I also think this says to me, because I've read it in my comments, if they make a full frame version, it will do even better. Nikon, make a full frame version. It doesn't even have to be that good. Just as long as it looks like the ZFC, it can be the Z5. It can be the entry level version. People will buy it. I would buy one tomorrow. I would. Do you want me to give you the money now? I will give you the money now and I will buy it. I'll pay in advance. I'm that excited about it. So it's selling super well and that is so exciting. Now, Ricky Talks has had his hands on a pre-production version of the 28 mil special edition version, which obviously can be used on the Z6, Z7, Z5, etc. Uh, but it's designed aesthetically to go with the ZFC. Now, what's great about this video is uh, Ricky has shown us that quality wise, if, if he puts it up against say the 24 to 70 2.8 Z mount lens, puts them both at 2.8 side by side, this very affordable lens, this 28 prime, almost as good as the S 
class zoom. But if you put them both at f4, they are indistinguishable when looking close up. So as usual, Nikon continue to give us high quality lenses out of the Z mount system. And even when you've got this entry level lens, it is performing extraordinarily well. And I look forward to showing you that 28 mil special edition lens very, very soon. Nikon Australia are going to be sending me a pre-release version of the ZFC and the 28 mil 2.8 SE edition as soon as they can get them to me. There are currently no ZFCs in the country, they tell me, and, it, and hopefully I will have it in my hands within the week and I will be able to do a pre-release preview of that camera and lens. I just wanna let you know that right now, Sydney, which is where Nikon's headquarters are, they are in a major COVID outbreak and in lockdown. So I really hope that that doesn't affect the ZFC coming my way. We will know soon enough. Okay, let's move on. Next, I'd love to talk about the Viltrox. The Viltrox 85mm 1.8, which we reviewed here on the channel not that long ago. If you own one of those, there's a firmware update. So go get yourself that and make your lens just a little bit better. Next in Sony news, the ZV-E10, the rumored camera to be coming out. It's been rumored for a while. It's been coming out for a while. Basically, there are videos showing it online, but it is not, to the best of my understanding, formally announced yet. Now, what's interesting to me is the ZV-E10 is a very similar camera in a lot of ways to the ZFC. They're both Zs, aren't they? To the ZFC. They're uh, interchangeable lens cameras. They've got flippy screens. They're both APS-C and they're both aimed at an entry level market. Now, I wonder if this has been delayed because the ZFC's come out and it's captured a, a lot of airtime because people are really excited about it, or is it delayed because of chip shortages? Really interesting question, that one. Who knows? We may never know, but basically we have the spec. It's a similar camera to the ZFC, obviously not the same, but aimed at the same sort of market, sort of the entry level part of the market. Where the ZFC sits is also in the nostalgia end of the market and also people who want to learn manually because you've got the buttons, you can see your shutter and all those sorts of things. You can see your aperture from the top on the little screen. The ZFC has a lot of applications. It's a very smart move by Nikon. Anyway, that's the latest on the Sony ZV-E10. We still believe it's coming soon. Next, I want to talk about the Canon R3 and the Nikon Z9. Now, it's rumoured that the R3 will be formally spec announced in September. So that is oh so close. We will hear the official spec and then it will be arriving in November and December. Now, interestingly, the Z9 is also rumoured to be arriving in November and December. And here it is, the two old incumbents of the photographic industry, Canon and Nikon, delivering their first fully pro, full-sized, large battery, vertical grip, mirrorless cameras to the market, and they're doing it at the same time, give or take. I don't think it's a coincidence. I actually think it's a really exciting time for the photographic industry. Obviously, Sony have held the limelight in mirrorless for the better part of a decade. And with these two cameras arriving, I think it'll create a much more three-dimensional and rounded mirrorless market in the 35 mil space. And ultimately, that is absolutely good for everyone. The R3 is in a bit of a different place to the Z9, and I think the A1 is in a, in a bit of a different place to those two as well. And I think it'll be great to be having those three cameras rubbing shoulders together by the end of this year. And then us as consumers, we're gonna have cameras that are all pretty similar and we can just choose the one that suits us with the lens combination that suits us or whatever combination and whatever use case suits your world. And just as we were about to upload this video, it has broken on Nikon Rumors, a rumor that a new firmware update will be coming for the Z62 and the Z72. And this is all about AF tracking 
tracking like we see in the DSLR Nikons, but it's supposed to be even better. Now this is rumoured to be coming in September, which of course is not very far away. Now why I think this rumour rings true is three reasons. The first reason is of course the Z9 is fully in development. And of course Nikon have stated, and they continue to state, and I even saw reference to this in an email that I received, that this camera will meet and exceed all our expectations. Nikon are working extremely hard on ensuring this focus system in the Z9 is going to be outstanding. So that's reason number one, and of course this technology can trickle down. Reason number two is, is that we've seen with the ZFC the fact that there is a focus improvement just with this one processor entry-level camera that the focusing has been improved. And the third reason is something that Ricky Talks said on his channel a few months ago in regards to the fact that the current firmware updates that we have for the Z62 and the Z72, they're just version ones. They're just version ones and version two is coming and they are going to be even better. And of course with the Z6 and the Z7, we've even had a version three. So there is still a very long way to go with the Z6 II and the Z7 II. So Ricky's already talked about it. Here's a rumor saying it's coming. The Z9 algorithms are being worked on and the ZFC has had improved focus just with its one processor, the one CPU in that camera. And of course, with the Z9 arriving just a month or two after this rumored update of firmware, I think it all comes together and it all makes sense. So this real-time tracking that we're gonna see in the Z6 II and the Z7 II is absolutely going to be an amazing thing for photographers who do bird in flight and difficult fast moving objects like that. If it meets and exceeds the current F DS, the F mount DSLRs, there's gonna be a lot of super happy and excited people out there. I look forward to seeing this in the coming weeks. Well, there it is. That's the news for this week, news and rumors and channel update. Please let me know in the comments below. What are you excited about of any of those things? Is channel membership something that you might be interested in? Thank you if you are, and no worries if you're not. It's all good. We will march forward either way. All right, well look, if this is your first time here, it's been absolutely spectacular to see you. I would love to see you again, so please do subscribe. Please share and please like. Liking is so good, it helps the video get out there further, and that means a lot to the channel. And please, if you wanna be in the 2022 calendar, if you'd like your name printed in every single edition, you must get your order in before July 23rd. That date is getting close. Do not hesitate. Do not blink. Make it happen. All right. It's been so good to see you, and I can't wait to see you very soon. Bye for now.